we got some crossovers this weekend I thought we would never see. Some of the most famous uh, YouTubers on the planet and streamers, and I don't mean political people, okay? I'm not talking about Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, whatever. I'm, I'm talking about like normal YouTubers uh, actually ended up meeting Donald Trump. And this has cultural implications in a way I'll explain in a second. Now, I'm probably going to have to give, like Mr. Beast, I'm probably going to have to give descriptions for all of our older viewers, the older people who don't know what's happening. They've been confused this entire episode, haven't they? Who's Chris? Who's Mr. Beast? Who are the people we're about to? So I'm going to I'm going to give a short bio for every person. So that way, uh, you know, but just so you know, older people. OK, basically, these are influencers out there that are very popular with Gen Z. They're very well known among the youths. OK. So first off, here are people we do know. There's him with Dana White, Kid Rock, Mike Tyson, which that one's pretty cool. Um, so everyone knows them, but it is a cool photo. And let's face it, looking at a picture like this, let's be completely real. No political fi figure for centuries to come will ever be as cool as Donald Trump. OK, I mean, the DeSantis heads can get mad at that, but whatever. It's true. I don't know what to tell you. OK, can name me any political figure for decades past decades future that's going to be this cool that is cool but uh, anyways not the point here here is donald trump with sneeko he met aiden ross they're pretty big streamers for people uh so that was iconic and uh here he is with jideon <laughs> which was hilarious and unexpected interesting shirt by the way by Jidian's part uh but Jidian is a very big prank youtuber for our older people but there they are which is really funny because i always thought Jidian was a liberal i think he still is but he did get banned from twitch and now he has a rumble deal so maybe there's something to that i don't know now this is all cool and kind of funny but why am i making it a story tonight besides the fact that it gets clicks because big YouTubers are in the title. Well, I say all of this because the influencer Donald Trump crossover, maybe not Gideon, but I just kind of use it as, as an example, is important for 2024 and the future of Republican politics in general. Because we contrast all of this that you saw with an announcement this week that the Biden administration is looking to set up basically an army of their own social media influencers, which may even get their own briefing room in the White House, apparently. There is no greater symptom of a dying republic than that, as you see Disclosed TV reporting. Can you, they're, they're gonna give an entire White House briefing room to TikTokers. Our younger generations are truly lost, man, truly lost, man. I don't know what to say no more, man. I think that's a quote from Aristotle. Uh, but yeah, OK, here they are creating a TikTok army to target young influencers. We've seen the Biden team flirt with this idea before. They did it a lot during Corona. You remember Olivia Rodrigo, that whole thing. There are a lot of TikTokers out there who were sponsored by Pfizer. Well, here they are. It's now official setting up their team of TikTok influencers to push Gen Z in their direction. Now. It's easy to laugh at that or brush it off, and I'm sure a lot of people will, but that would be a big mistake in my opinion. In my opinion, this is actually quite genius what they are doing, and it could show to be very effective. Young voters, as we know, are a growing share of the electorate. There is no better way to engage them than, you know, getting the people who they look up to to engage in politics themselves, and especially nowadays where the current system of elections, as we're very familiar with, is really just a turnout game, right, with all the mail-in voting and, you know, early voting, all that stuff. Really, how you win elections is by turnout. You turn out everyone who could possibly maybe be sympathetic to you, and uh, this is especially the case. And furthermore, whether or not we want to recognize it, the internet is now an unmatched force. I think it's actually past TV in its ability to monumentally shift the culture. In the past few years, we have seen entire movements from BLM to Andrew Tate to Turning Point USA, whatever it is, all these like very diverse on all different sides entirely grow off of social media. This is all to say the following. I do not work for the Trump campaign, but if I did, I would immediately start working on a counter for Biden's social media blitz. And anyone who potentially is watching this that has any tie to anything in the GOP, listen up. This is free advice, okay? What I would do if I were Donald Trump and his team is I would immediately start contacting influencers for myself. And I don't mean Mike Lindell. 
I don't mean the brick suit guy or Vince Dow or whatever. Okay, we are political people. We engage for the most part with people who already vote in the elections. You watching this stream probably already voted in the last election if you're old enough, right? What I mean is reach out to the mainstream cultural figures who are sympathetic to Trump and right wing ideas and establish some type of relationship. The first place I can think of is maybe country music, right? I know we have a lot of woke idiot country music singers, but still there are many, Jason Aldean comes to mind, who openly espouse Trump uh, support for Trump and conservatism. And most importantly, the audience of country music. Almost all country music fans would vote Republican if you put a ballot in front of them. They are natural conservatives, they're natural Republicans. But not all country music fans vote in every election. So why does the Republican Party not use country singers in the same way Democrats use pop singers and all of that, especially considering nowadays, like I said, the way to win elections is through turnout. It's all about turnout, turnout, turnout. Who can we get to throw as many ballots at the system as possible? Oh, random inner city homeless moron. Give me your ballot. We're going to go vote for you. That's that's how. So if, if, if they're doing that and they're using people like that to do that, why don't we do that? Because we don't think ahead. We don't think intuitively, I suppose. And regarding Gen Z, we often talk about how liberal the youth are, and this is largely true. But there is also a significant and growing Gen Z counterculture that is noticeably anti-leftist. Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson come to mind. Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson are very popular and influential among young men. I think a lot of people underestimate how many young men out there actually watch them and, and like them. And their followers would probably vote 95% Republican if you handed all of them a ballot. But how many fans of them are voting? How many fans of the red pill manosphere space are voting? How many fans of Pearl Davis, Fresh and Fit, the whatever podcast, Sneeko, whatever. How many of these guys vote? How many frat guys out there are voting? Man, there are many actually target demographics, especially among young men, that we could engage and would vote Republican, but almost none of them. And the GOP makes very little effort to reach these people through influencers. The Democrats are doing this on their side, and so they're having, I don't know, James Charles going to talk about, <laughs> to go vote for Biden. Okay, then why isn't Myron from Fresh and Fit saying go vote for Trump? You see? You see what I'm saying here, right? So if I were on the Trump team, free advice, this is what I would do. I would immediately reach out to all of these mainstream TikTokers, streamers, red pill, red pill people, whatever, who are just sympathetic to me, okay? Nelk boys, no jumper, all the red pill people, anyone we can get, okay? These people need to be interviewing Donald Trump, which I think they would like to do. That's views. And also, I think these people need to be, if some way, if they're willing, plugged into the campaign and paid to have a professional relationship the same way Biden is trying to do for his side. I'm telling you, these people are very influential. I would not underestimate the impact they had if they were truly involved with the campaign and not just simply saying occasionally, yeah, Trump was cool. But, you know, and, and then the viewers will watch. Yeah, I agree. Trump was cool. But they're not registered to vote. They're not passionate about politics. You see the issue? Furthermore, second thing I would do. I would hire a highly talented team of editors to flood TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, all of that stuff, all that short form content stuff that you probably browse and are addicted to all day. Me too, right? With Donald Trump, red, mill, red pills, like Sigma style edits. You know what I'm talking about? You see them on the shorts all the time. You see the clips, right? They're all HDR. They have the music. You know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Because here's the thing. Classic political ads are great. They're fine. But they, they, I mean, and they work in some mediums, but they're not the way to take over the Internet these days. Think about how Andrew Tate took over the Internet. Think about the whatever podcast. Think about all these viral clips that you just see everywhere. Those short form red pill style edits can genuinely take over the Internet if you flood the algorithms with a bunch of them. No political candidate thus far has thought of a way to weaponize that or, or do that for themselves. So, again, free advice. Vince Dow thinks of it. Whatever. Take it. Take it. OK, whoever, you know, Trump can't take this advice. Start doing that. Start flooding the Internet, you know, in the same way. Make all these affiliate pages. You know, you, you'll see what I'm talking about if you scroll the shorts feed. 
This is exactly what I would do if I was Trump. I would either hire an army of editors to do it, or I would just pay all these different red pill pages that already exist to post and make the edits for me. However you do it, I'm telling you, this is the move. This is the strategy. And this is how Donald Trump can reconquer essentially the internet. Because I'm very tapped into the red pill stuff on, that's all my YouTube shorts feed is these days, right? It's, it's all that stuff. I see occasionally they'll make this Donald Trump Sigma edit, but most of the time, like, who is it, right? It's, it's fresh and fit or Tate or Peterson, whatever. If you flooded the internet with Donald Trump content, and by the way, Donald Trump is a just personality who's very conducive to the Sigma male edits. If you flood the internet like that, You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised as to what it does. I should really be a political consultant, shouldn't I? People need to listen to this. Hey guys, Vince Dow here. Hope you enjoyed that clip from our show. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to check out our other clips and check out the Vince Dow show live every weekday of the night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's been going great. The people have been loving it. So again, 8 p.m. Eastern time live Mondays through Fridays here on YouTube. You do not want to miss it. Thanks and God bless.